Welcome to Toy Poloi. Welcome to another video from Toy Ploy. It is Saturday the 18th of February 2023 and we are in Exeter at the Matford uh, Centre. It's a new place for this toy fair. I've not been to the uh, Exeter Toy Fair for a couple of years and uh, since the last time I came it's moved. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what this is like. First up because it's in a new place and secondly because it's on a Saturday and normally the toy fairs are on a Sunday. So let's head in and see what we can find. <laughs>
Right, well, we're back in the car and it was a pretty good fare, actually. There's quite a lot of stalls there. Not quite as big as the Shepton Mallet Fair and not quite as big as some of the previous Exeter fairs that I've been to, but still a nice amount of stuff and nice to uh, see sort of what's available. I picked up some interesting pieces that I hadn't got from my collection. And one particularly interesting piece that uh, I didn't expect to see, which is a, a new badge for the Nerd Vest. So I'll show you that in a minute. And I also got, finally got to meet Jules Burt from uh, the YouTube channel. Jules Burt, um, who is someone I've chatted to and spoken to for many years now, but this is actually the first time we were able to finally meet in person. So uh, it was nice to meet him. I gave him a copy of my book and he gave me a copy of his book. So that was really nice. So let's head on back to Toy Ploy and I'll show you what I got. OK, so I am now back at Toy Ploy and we can take a look at the things that I picked up. First up are some bits that I swapped with Jules Burt. If you haven't checked out his YouTube channel, then please do. It's a really fascinating channel full of vintage toys and also vintage books because he's a massive collector of uh, vintage novels of all sorts. So uh, we did a little bit of a swap. I gave him a copy of the Toy Ploy annual and he gave me a copy of this which is Men's Adventure number no. 7 which is a quarterly magazine that uh, he sort of writes for and edits. I can't show you the content on this channel because it's a little bit more adult than the sort of things that I would normally show here but it's really good. It's full of sort of uh, pulp novels and uh, covers for uh, all sorts of books. It's a fascinating read so I'd heartily recommend that you uh, go and grab a copy. So yeah thanks for to Jules for uh, swapping me uh, my book for his book here uh, and we also did another little bit of a swap which was uh, he wanted a blue version of Max Rebo so I I gave him the Max Rebo that I had dyed blue many many years ago on this channel. It's been sat in a box here not doing anything because um, he said that he'd got one, well this very one here which you can see has lost all of its blue colour and is fairly sun damaged. In fact you can see there's a lot of yellowing going on the front there, even masked where his uh, hand was hiding it. So yeah I gave him the one that I dyed blue all those years ago and he gave me this one which I think I will probably have a go at dyeing again at some point soon as it's been a very long time since I've uh, tried that and I've got some ideas of how to make it even bluer so I might have a go at uh, doing this one again soon. So uh, yeah anyway it was great to meet up with Jules. First time that we've managed to meet up after all these years and hopefully we'll meet up again soon. Next up it's the remains of another action man. Uh, Jules from uh, Final Frontier Toys. Uh, I had lots of rummage boxes on his stall and I always like having to rummage through them and it, I found this which is the remains of another action man. This poor chap's certainly seen uh, some wars. He's been scratched. He's got red ink and stuff all over his back. He's obviously missing his arms, missing his legs. The bottom of that knee is snapped off but I couldn't leave it. It's a sort of a nice little project. This I paid nine pounds for it. I think I've got a few bits for it. I've definitely got a head. I've probably got some bits to the arms. I don't think I've got any legs or feet for it, but it doesn't matter. It's a sort of nice little long-term project and I will get this fixed up. It's a good starting point. And if you watch my previous toy fair, toy hunting video at the uh, Shepton Manor Fair, I actually bought the remains of an Atomic Man off him at that fair. And that Atomic Man is now all fixed up. In fact, I will bring him in so you can see. He has been turned into the mass got for Toy Ploy 2, my second channel. And if you haven't subscribed to that, then check it out. I will put a link to that in the description as well. So this is the Atomic Man that I picked up at that previous Toy Fair. He's now all fixed up. I got some replacement hands for him. I did happen to have his head. I happen to have his forearm. And uh, John uh, from the uh, Action Man Barracks Facebook uh, group uh, very kindly sent me the foot that I was missing. So that's what's happened to the Atomic Man that I found at the last Toy Fair. And this poor chap I will be fixing up as uh, time goes by and as I find more pieces for him. But I I think certainly I've got enough to do the top section of him. I don't think I've got enough to do his legs, but at least he will be starting to look more like an action man again. And then from Lawrence at Toy Planet UK, I picked up a few more mask figures. He had a new rummage pot, which was absolutely full of sort of uh, slightly beatery type figures. Uh, and at the bottom of that pot, I was picking out lots of these mask figures. And these are all ones that I don't have uh, in my collection. So I picked up uh, this one, which is uh, Jacques Le Fleur. Uh, I've got a Bruce Sato, which is the version I don't have. I've got the sort of the standard version. I've also picked up uh, Bruno Shepherd from the uh, Barracuda. Uh, I don't have the vehicle, but I didn't have the figure either. So that's another figure that I, to add to my collection. I got the uh, Afterburner version of Dusty Hay. So that's a nice, again, nice figure. None of these come with masks, but uh, they were all fairly cheap. So it's just sort of nice to add them, uh, you know, to a, my, my growing mask collection. And then I got uh, Maximus Mayhem. Again, another figure that I don't have. I'm sort of slowly building up the mask figures. I know it, uh, the masks are the harder part to uh, find, but I quite enjoy the figures without the mask. So I'm, I'm just sort of grabbing them as I see them. And I paid £15 for these uh, five figures. So yeah, not too bad a price. I'm quite happy with that. And as they're all ones that I didn't have, they're going straight in my little display of mask figures. 
And then I have this one final oddity, which I could do with a little bit of help on, because uh, I picked this up thinking, oh, that's interesting. It's a sort of a uh, weird version of Skeletor. It does even say Mattel on the bottom of it. But then when I got it home, I was sort of looking at it a bit more, and I realised that the date on the bottom of it actually says Mattel 1980, and He-Man and the Masters of the Universe didn't come out till 1983. So what is this? Is it supposed to be Skeletor? Because it sort of has the, the uh, look of Skeletor. It's certainly got the right sort of colourings, the purple hood, the skull with the yellow and green and red eyes. But it's really early on the bottom. It does say, if you can just about read there, it says 1980 Mattel. So this is an official badge. But I'm just not sure if it's Skeletor, because it doesn't really look like Skeletor. It's got a sort of a vague resemblance to it. But, um, you know, what other Mattel uh, licenses were out there in 1980 that had a character that looked like that? So if anyone knows what this is, then do let me know, because uh, to me it's a bit of a mystery. I bought it because I want to put it on my nerd vest. But I'm sort of a little bit uh, bemused by what it is at the moment. So, yeah, if you know what it is, leave some comments below and um, yeah, tell me if you know exactly what this character is. Is it Skeletor? Is it someone else? And so there we go. That is all of the pieces that I picked up at the Toy Fair. I have to say it wasn't the biggest of Toy Fairs. I think the Shepton Mallet Toy Fair is slightly bigger. And there's certainly more stores at the Shepton Mallet Fair that have uh, the sort of toys that I like. There was an awful lot of trains and an awful lot of die cast at this one. So it was fairly slim pickings for my sort of toys. But I did manage to find stuff, as you can see. I'm very happy with those new Mars figures. The Action Man is going to be a fun project. It may take me a while to get that him all fixed up, but I like projects like that. And this little badge is a complete mystery. So I like little mysteries like that as well, because it gets me thinking and uh, hopefully I will be able to find out what it is. And of course, it was great to actually finally meet up with Jules Burt because it's been so many years since we sort of started chatting and we've sort of both run our YouTube channels sort of side by side. So it's really nice to uh, finally meet him in person and say a proper hello. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have then make sure to hit the subscribe button and tap the bell to be notified each time I upload a new video. And thanks for watching. Thanks for watching Toy Ploy. Subscribe for more great videos. You can also follow Toy Ploy on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram.